Hi, welcome to episode one, two, three, four of He Said, She Said with Denise Lewis. And thank you for everybody's listening and getting some good feedback. And I enjoy just the fact of putting things out there amongst two real people. We're not influencers. Um, we're definitely our podcasters. We are YouTubers. We are coaches. And we are mindful coaches. So if you don't know yet, my name is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. If you're in a situation where you lack self-esteem or confidence and it's affecting all facets of your life, um, let's say career, relationships, happiness, success, this is where I can help. Denise. Hi, I'm Denise Lewis. I'm so happy to be here with my wonderful friend, Ron, uh, for podcast number four. Yay, we're doing it. It's so exciting. Um, I have a coaching business called GrandSlamCoaching.com. And I am a performance-based coach, but performance isn't necessarily athletically, you know, athletic-based. It's also your performance in the boardroom, in the courtroom, classroom, whatever your job is, whatever you need to do, wherever you want to improve your performance and be the best you that you be the best you that you can be. Because I want you to have a grand slam day. And we're gonna have a great grand slam day today, Ron, because we have a really exciting topic today. I'm so happy about this. I'm excited too, and it's very unfortunate it happens, but it does happen in all facets of people in life. I don't care if you're 10 years old, I don't care if you're 100 years old, you will face it somewhere in your life. And we're talking about emotional abuse. Now, let's be correct. It doesn't mean someone's beating your butt, okay? It can also be uh, verbal abuse. It can also be sarcasm that is abusive towards you. It can be simple as you're dumb, you're stupid, you're good for nothing. All of those are considered abuse because it doesn't feel well and doesn't feel well come from somebody that you love. A person on the street, I take example, I was at the gym. This guy says, Ron, your, your, your legs are swollen on your shoulders. I'm like, okay. Next workout for me, I don't consider emotional abuse because it's not someone I really care about. Is this a comment? I went over my head. I kept moving forward because mm -hmm. it's just in your opinion. But things can be very hopeful. If that comment came from someone I cared about or someone I value of high status, I could take it very personally and it can affect me emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to always give example about emotional abuse. And I'll give a great example. I've used this before. So I was dating this girl. And um, it was always in a situation where I wouldn't hurt more than she wanted me. And when that happens, even for men, mm -hmm. it's you always constantly are trying to keep with the Jones. You're trying to do everything you can. And depending upon your love language, in my case, my love language giving and receiving is things. So the bigger the gift, the more I show my love. So I'm not going to paint you a picture, but I will buy you a humongous gift. So I'm, I'm driving her car, driving back to my apartment at the time. And we're talking about some very odd things and in comes time talking about money. And then she tells me, right in the car, face to face, Ryan, what do you have to offer me? There's so many men that are millionaires that can give me anything what we had to offer me. And I'm telling you, I'm five foot nine, I'm 207 pounds, but I felt oh, like an ant. <laughs> I bet. Like, like an ant. And, and what an odd tone point, it's like, I felt like I was sinking down the car. I, I just, I was going down because <laughs> I had nothing to say. Uh, you know, I, I said, well, I try my best. I know I'm not a millionaire, but I care about you. I love you. I drove to my apartment, got the car, but man, I felt that big the whole time. Mm -hmm. Now, fast mm -hmm. forward to now, if someone says to me today, I was like, great. It's like, I said, once you're millionaires. Oh yes, there is. Tell you what. Let's go our separate ways. I, it's not going to work out for me. I don't keep it with it. But what it did for me is it made me want to buy more. So I didn't tell her, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to show you I can take care of you. So I'm buying the, the expensive purses. I'm buying the Christian Louboutin shoes. Louboutin shoes between $600 to $2,000. We're not talking about inexpensive shoes. Wow. I was doing all these things because I was being abused emotionally. I was being put down. I was being mm -hmm. thought of lower than low. That's one incident. Another incident I tell you too as well is that when your relationship and the same person in the same case, I want her so bad. So I'm pretty much, anytime she called, I'm like, uh, 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 hello? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, what do you need? I, we gonna do lunch? 
what do you mean I'm gonna drop everything? I'm gonna come see you. And she would talk, wouldn't talk to me for days. And one day she'll call up, I'm grabbing the phone, I'm dropping everything I can to come see you, her, whatever, because she knew she can play my strings and I'd be a little puppy. Mm-hmm. Those are emotional abuse because they don't feel well. And it ca- had me into a point where my life was turning upside down because I wanted to please her, I to buy it for her, and I wasn't getting the feeling I wanted in return. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and you know what, it takes a certain um, being in touch with your core values. And it takes a lot of self-respect to say, this is wrong. And it's extremely hard. It's hard for a lot of people yeah. to do. Um, I was in a very emotionally abusive situation for almost 17 years. I knew probably in the second year that this was wrong. I spent every ounce of energy and time, money to send him to therapy to get help. We did couples therapy, individual therapy to demonstrate to him that this was wrong. And the only reason why I stayed was this all started happening when I was pregnant. Oh, wow. We we had a little one on the way. I couldn't, we had a new business. We had a new house. We had a new baby. I couldn't just leave that. And I, I, we didn't have the money to split up either. That was the other thing. So as time went on, it didn't matter what I did. I would come home and be like, okay, I've been working all day. I took the baby to daycare. I've been at work all day while he's been lying on the sofa and brought home, you know, $1,800 in profit. And I picked up, you know, our son from daycare and I would walk into the house to be told, oh, it's only $1,800. Well, it should be 2000. And this house looks like a bunch of, you know, homeless people live in it. And I'm paraphrasing because what he said was extremely rude. Um, And you need to come clean up the house. And by the way, when's dinner? Oh, this is what I went through. And words hurt. Words hurt tremendously. And there's only so many times you can hear that you suck. It doesn't even matter why. But words hurt. And it, and it's, when you're dating someone like your example, Ron, when you finally wake up and realize I'm done, you can walk away. But what you said at the beginning was when it's someone who's supposed to love you, it makes it even worse. And this was someone who stood up before family and friends and made a promise to take care of me, to love me, to cherish me, who had turned on me I didn't know what to do. And I was so lost for so long and it affected me. It affects our son. Our son is turning 18 next week. He hasn't seen his father for weeks. Can't wait to tell him on his birthday, dad, go jump off a cliff and stay out of my life. But he's having a hard time with it because it's his dad. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, he wants to shove him out. On the other hand, he's like, please be my dad. It's what I need. And again, it's, he's, he's suffering more, even more so than I'm suffering because that's someone who's supposed to love him. Wow. I see, even though you're with 17 years, this whole ripple effect has now not just transferred to you, but also to your kiddo who's turning 18. Yeah. He's still affected by this. Absolutely. We are still affected by this, unfortunately, even today, because the last weapon of abuse that my ex has is to not pay me what he's agreed to pay me and to refuse to pay child support. Now you you refuse to pay child support. You're telling your child, I reject you. And then turns around and wonders why said child won't answer the phone. Doesn't want to spend time with him. uh, Doesn't want to engage in him. And I, supported and encouraged my son until about two years ago to spend time with his father, that he was his father, develop your own relationship, blah, blah, blah. It got to the point where my son just said, I can't, I can't do this anymore. It's too hard. And I've supported him in his decision and that's all I can do. But it is really painful when it's someone who you are supposed to love, who's supposed to love you, 
and who you love back that you can't walk away from. Now that is a tougher decision because you have a house, you have a kiddo, you guys are married, you have everything in between. You just can't up and move on because what I come to realize, <clears throat> not all situations, if someone's physically abusing you, physically means you have bruises, black eyes, mm -hmm. broken nose, or even the emotional abuse. First, because we're coaches now, now we understand values. So now we can understand, wait a minute, this person X is not about my values, so we can make a better decision for ourselves. But those out there that haven't went to IPEC or are not coaches, what the caveat, the reason why we stay in these situations is out of fear. Yeah, a lot of a lot of it out was of fear. fear. And I was told time and time again, no one will ever love you the way I love you. But Denise, if you fuck up again, I have a divorce lawyer on call. All it takes is ten thousand dollars. He's a junkyard dog. You will be left with nothing. Our son will be left with nothing. That was wow. a threat that I lived under, and. One of the reasons why it took me so long to leave is because he ignored the business and he screwed up the business and got us into a huge amount of debt. So it took me a long time of working really hard and trying to balance all this stuff and protect myself, protect the staff, protect our son to get out of debt and get to a point where there was money to support two households and leave. That's, wow. That's why it took me so long to do it. And then I and then Taekwondo was a huge part of that. Um, my son started to do it after a few months. I was like, oh my God, I can do this too. And this looks like so much fun. That helped us get out of it. Um, getting on financial solid, more solid financial footing helped. And then of course coaching helped me a lot. Um, you remember how lost I was when still <laughs> when we met and how far I've come. And and it's been fantastic and i would love to help anybody you know get out of that situation or, or at least feel better about themselves to be able to help themselves but it is a huge ripple effect on everybody it was on my family uh on, particularly on my son who i protect like you know the ultimate tiger mom um and it's just it's just sad it's just so sad that people ha feel the need to do this you know what well, here's here's the here's the, the, the thing here <clears throat> when i went through my situation um the best way to explain this is people are animals let me let me just let me just say that what people tend to do is their weak inside so the other only way to make them feel good is make them feel feel superior if they find out there's a weakness about you, let's say your case, financial security, or my case, I didn't think I'd find someone that's pretty. I, what, I wanted her so bad, she knew that, so she played it on these insecurities. So by saying these guys are multimillionaires and they want me, it's just a way of playing on an insecurity. Mm -hmm. Now, does it mean I said it to her, people aren't dumb, they sense intuitions. You know, Let's say she was driving a BMW, I was driving a Honda Sonata. She sees her cars better than mine. She should always would say, why don't you have a BMW? Why don't you have a BMW? A guy like you just have a BMW. Break my wallet. It's called break my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you a side joke. I had a guy two years ago, I'm at the gym working out and he pulls next to me. I'm in the gym waiting for my next client. So client comes in. Well, clients can really come in. I run inside, use the bathroom. And the guy's in the locker room says, hey, Ron, I didn't know you drive a Honda. I was like, yeah. He says, don't you... Uh, don't you want to drive like a sports car or BMW? I say, no, let me tell you something. He says, what? I'm taking donations. So here's my bag right here. So if you want to donate to my car, cause I'm all, I'm all for it, buddy. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, it's no big deal, man. I mean, I'm taking donations. Yeah. So if you want to donate, here's my bag, put some money in my bag. I'm taking donations. He yeah. never said that to me again. <laughs> so if someone ever says to you, says, oh, really? I'm taking donations. Please donate to that cause that you want me to have. Mm -hmm. I will take your money for sure, tax free. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But exactly. with that said, she observed that and she played upon those insecurities because her he she herself was insecure. Mm -hmm. I could have I the minute you started the story, that's exactly where I knew you were going with that. Because she was insecure. But it also took you 
to find your maturity in your in in yourself and your self-respect and your your feeling of self-worth to finally say this is enough and I don't want to see her anymore that doesn't no. mean it didn't suck it didn't mean it wasn't hard but you did it you know what let me tell you what happened that relationship was on and off for years. So we got to say we're going to work things out finally. If a relationship is breaking up on and off continuously, love is never uh, off. It's always on. So if you're kind of going back and forth to break up and get back together, love cannot be on and off. Either have it or you don't. You don't all of a sudden exactly. tell your son, I'm not going to love you today. No, you love yourself no matter what, right? Yeah, exactly. That relationship lasts of about September of 2015 to around June of 2016. And that's when I got ready to start my business. I'm now working my full-time career and I'm doing personal training on the side after working on the weekends. And I can remember I'm saying, hey, you know what? I got to work late tonight. I'll be off by eight. I'll see you tonight. Oh, that's too late. I'm going to wait for you. I don't want to see you. It's like, okay, on the weekend, and I got to work in the morning and see you in the afternoon. Oh, that's too late. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> so, wow. Caddy, I, I'm wow. telling you, it, it was just, it even got to the point where I had to beg for intimacy. Mm -hmm. Like I'm telling you, that aunt was still there. I had to beg for being intimate, I had to beg for touch, I had to beg for kisses, beg for all that because it was like, well, you have to work if you want it. You haven't proven enough to me. That was the attitude. But the funny thing about the situation that I will never forget. The world and your voice works in mysterious ways. See, I'm going to touch now my heart, mm -hmm. my head. And the head gave up a long time ago. It says, buddy, done. But the heart was so attached, it couldn't let go up until one day. And this is where we got to realize what's happening when you're facing emotional abuse that's mentally, not physically, is one day she had to go to a different country to see her family. So I took a half day off work. I took it to SF because she needed an emergency passport. Passport's about to expire. You can't travel within six months. A passport expires. There's some regulation there. But anyways, I off half a day. I drive all the way to SF. And those that know SF from San Jose, eight o'clock in the morning. Nightmare. You know I mean? Nightmare. That's all yeah. I gotta say. So, if, <laughs> so if you're familiar with a big city like LA or anything out there, it's a nightmare. It's like it could take you an hour to go three miles okay mm -hmm. so with that said we get there and obviously the way it works you have to have a number you go up you get a picture and all this stuff we all, almost had stayed the whole day i had to leave so i left came back home she stayed there and she had the password she took to bart which took a train back to where i lived at and i was at the uber to my apartment away from me there so i, I go take a half day off <clears throat> go to work come back she's home I'm like, okay, hey, how you doing? Everything's fine, good passport. Yeah, everything's great, cool, good. I said, hey, so what do you want for dinner? I'm not hungry right now. I said, okay, so, you know, at the time I'm reading the fitness and I still am, and I go warm up my food, sorry, prep. No, I pick up the freezer, warm it up, I start eating. She wakes up and like, I said, where are you going? I'm leaving. I said, wow, what's happened? Well, at the end of the day, I said, here we go. What's gonna be happening, what's gonna happen tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So that night rolls around. She really doesn't talk to me that at all after she left. Next day, I do my normal text. Hey, good morning. How you doing? And here comes fine. I'm like, what now? Like, what, what am I doing wrong? What, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Text was, you have issues. Do you have problems? I think you need to get help. And um, I don't want to be with you anymore. And wow, I was that hard point in time, my heart actually let go. I was done. Like that sense of relief means, man, I did all I can. I can't do anymore. And it was gone. Yeah. It took months for it to happen, but it was finally done. So she left. She went to the, her country, which was the Philippines. And then she uh, comes back in about three to four weeks. At that point in time, my birthday was coming up. So here comes the call. Hey, how you been? How you doing? Um, I got back. I'm in a much better place now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, tell me what a much better place looks like for you. 
<laughs> you know, this was even before well, you started approaching stuff. That's a great question. Yeah, what is a better place well, to like for you? <laughs> and the, the response was, oh, well, you know, I just had to go through a few things. Very vague, very not specific. I said, so would you like to sit down and talk? Well, you know, I really want to discuss that because didn't pass. So I said, what is it like for you? I asked, let's have a talk because I want to understand, right? Yeah. So here, my birthday is coming. She used to call me. We would hang out. I can make reservations. At that point, I, I met someone out of, sporadically. That person took me out for my birthday, and she saw me there. We were there at the same, I guess, location. Oh. I didn't see her. On my birthday with somebody else. That was good a really you. good feeling. <laughs> it's not my well, fault. Yeah. You, said, you say you could do better. You say you don't want me in the text. I don't know how much when we do is still around, like, oh, I'm wait for you to show up. No, it's yeah. gone. Yeah, it took it's that fun. long for the heart to give up. It took that long to realize I deserve better. It took that long to realize. And this is just a few months. Now, imagine your case, you're there for 17 years. Obviously, there's other factors, but wow. I mean, it was just one day I woke up and that was it. Yeah. Well, like I said, I knew a long time ago that this that I had to get out. And it, it took me years to get it to a point where I could leave. Because I watched him, I mean, as I said before, I mean, he ran us into a huge amount of debt. Mm -hmm. That took me about nine, 10 years to get out of. Wow. Yeah. You hunted not, down that long for that time is, period to, to get the hell out of there. Yeah. Yeah. And it, um, this is, I'm not talking about mortgage debt. I'm talking about other debt, which was, and it was all in his name, but yet I was responsible for paying it off. And it was just, you know what? I did it and I've come out the other side and I'm much stronger. I'm, I'm, I'm not pickier, but I, I can certainly compartmentalize people a lot easier now. Um, that, okay, well, you're, just like with dating, you know what, you're not for me, but you know, we can go have fun watching football or we can do this or this isn't going to work. And just, it's all, you know, it's moving and flowing. Um, but for someone to get into my heart, it's going to take a lot more, a lot more work and a lot more time for me. Mm -hmm. And and that's okay because I'm making a lot of good friends along the way and I'm increasing my support network and who knows, who knows what's going to happen. But um, I'm still a hot mess. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we all, we all are hot mess internally somewhere along the lines. Exactly. But you know what? My son is still my number one priority until he's off to college or trade school or whatever it is. And my poor kid, he's been through enough. He's been through a lot. And uh, yes. And I just, my heart just breaks for him. Um, yeah. But back to um, emotional abuse, you know, the, the signs aren't always there. Mm -hmm. I guess the, I guess the tipping point for me, I knew when I had finally broken free, when I went to lunch with a girlfriend of mine who I'd known for about seven or eight years, suddenly across the table, she's looking at me and she's looking at me and I'm like, Kathy, what's going on? She said, I never knew you had blue eyes. And I said, really? Maybe. you've known me all these years. She said, no, they were gray and dull and empty. She said, today they're blue and they're sparkling. And this was a few months after I'd moved out. Wow. And I was like, so, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so your spirit became more alive once you got out of that negativity. Mm -hmm. That black cloud was gone and people actually saw the true Denise. Yes. And I, and, and it got down to a, a conversation, which was generally, was I fun before, even when my eyes were gray and lifeless? She said, yes. And I said, okay, fasten your seatbelt, honey. Just imagine how much fun I can be now. Right. And, you know, and I have had a lot more fun and I've been a lot more fun and it's been great, but it's, and it's, it's been a painful journey to get there. There've been a lot of tears, um, you know, disappointment on behalf of my son for not having a family that's together. Um, but you know what? I'm 
we're here and and it's friday and i'm with ron and we're talking about on podcast woo you know <laughs> we're having fun you know what hearing your story least think about my story says man my story was nothing compared to yours you stayed there for nine to ten years and and it wasn't until I, I don't know how the universe works in mysterious ways but when something flipped so when i saw it they gave you the energy to say i need something better for myself mm -hmm. Now, those out there that are facing, facing emotional abuse is we need to understand this. It's not you, it's them. And because it's not them, because it's them and not you, you get caught up with, I need to stay, I need to be in this relationship, I need to keep going. You don't. Exactly. Everybody has their own pillar of strength. Believe it or not, everybody has their own pillar of strength we can help you find it. Ron yes. and I can help you find it, dust it off, polish it up. We can help you find your self-respect that you have, you've just forgotten where you put it. Oh, I love that. And when it's you from have, pain yeah. to growth. And when you have your self-respect and when you have your inner pillar of strength, you can move mountains. Mm -hmm and you can get out of it and you can have the life that you want and that you deserve because you are a human being. And most likely you are an amazing human being and we'll help you find your spirit too. And let me tell you how you find that. You find that by staying right now and thinking to yourself in a quiet room, kids are asleep even before you go to bed, breathe. In your nose, out through the mouth. Do that five, 10 times. Visualize where you are, then visualize where you want to be. Now, you may not have all the tools from A to Z, because you don't, because you're not, you want to be somewhere else, but you're stuck where you are. That's where Denise and I can come in and fill that A to Z gap. Where mm -hmm. we can figure out where you are and where you want to be manifesting that through in allowing it to come out now when you think about a rose bush a rose bush like any, any plant starts a small seed but if you plant that seed you water it you nurture it you put sunlight eventually become an amazing gorgeous beautiful rose bush bush and you can do the same thing so i'm going to tell you how you can find me I'm under www.ronjohnsoncoaching.com. Click on discovery call. We can book a discovery call with you and figure out where you are and where you want to be. Visualizing a much better life holistically. Because I do help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. So if you're tired of emotional abuse, you're tired of the situation, this is where I can help you. And you can find me, Denise Lewis, at www.grandslamcoaching.com dot com because here's the thing you all have the answers inside of you we're going to ask the right questions and help you find those answers and find your spirit and find your inner pillar of strength and find your self-respect so that you can find your path from a to z that's what we do and we do it in a genuine authentic caring supportive way so either Ron Johnson or Denise Lewis, Ron Johnson at, I forgot your website, doll. RonJohnsonCoaching.com. RonJohnsonCoaching.com or GrandSlamCoaching.com. We are here to help you be the best you that you can be. Every and day. I would say always thanks everybody. You can be the best you can be every day. And from the bottom of my heart. Oh, from the bottom of mine, from the bottom of our hearts, yay. I love it when you get down in that space. Yes. It's so fun. I love it too. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. And I look forward for another He Says, She Said. One, two, three, four, five. Coming soon. Thanks for Bye. listening and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Have a great day.